Primary science. Space. The final frontier. There's a lot of different things in space, like planets, stars, and moon. And like, it's this weird, different. I think it's really amazing. I might be able to find a new planet. And as Ponsbourne St Mary's Primary School hurtles through the ether, class teacher Adrienne Bullen is facing the challenge of teaching the Earth in space. We have the Earth, the Moon and the Sun. Adrienne will be enhancing the children's learning with a trip to a local observatory and planetarium. But within the limits of the classroom, she's finding out what her class already know by asking them to sort out a set of statements. Work out which ones are true, which ones are false. If you're not sure, put them in the red. No light on the dark side of the moon. There isn't, because the moon only goes like that. Grace, is this true or false? The children have been recording how their shadows change on the playground. It may look like one small jump for Fred, but it's a giant leap in investigating the earth and sun and night and day. This is my second year of teaching now. Last year was my NQT year. Um, I like teaching because I try and make it as exciting as possible for the children. Because I remember some lessons as a child, the teachers were just so boring, I thought, I want to make teaching exciting and alive. So we're looking at our shadows. We went out every hour and we looked at our shadows and drew around our shadows again to see if they had changed. Did they change at all? Danielle? Yeah. They did change. Excellent. Can you describe how they changed? Um, they moved right and they got smaller. Excellent. We went out there all morning and towards lunchtime our shadows got smaller. <laughs> and there's also... Adrienne has a clear set of learning objectives and key words for the children to use. But teaching huge concepts of space are a challenge. It's quite difficult because it's really far away and you've got to find out everything about space. You've got to learn a lot, all about the moon, sun, planets, stars and all that. I like all the planets but it's a bit complicated with all the satellites and everything. Which way the sun sets and rises, because like, that's quite confusing. I get confused with that. What do you think the torch is going to represent? Jade? Sun. With the, the teaching assistant's help, Adrienne set up a carousel of day and night activities, using props, a mock news report, and exploring day and night in different parts of the world. Her aim is to get all the children actively involved in thinking about the movement of the earth, sun and moon. I always try and incorporate some kinesthetic learning into the teaching, some visual way of the children to move around and pretend to be. I also try and incorporate a visual aspect, whether it be diagrams, drawings, pictures of the things, and also including some reading, and research is always a good idea for the older children. So, should we have a picture of the sun first to show them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you... Yeah, and then the five seconds later, slowly. the moon comes up. It's a bit better doing activities because it's more active and, you, and it's more fun. What I like best about science is that like, you can experiment all different things and you can try out new things. Children enjoy um, activities more than just reading or doing writing. It gets you more involved and you learn. And then the moon the goes around the earth. By making themselves into the earth and spinning round, the children can see that day and night happen simultaneously in different parts of the world. Uh, what time would it be in Australia? Midday. Max, what time would it be in Great Britain? Midnight. We learn about night and day and like and how night and day like comes and everything, like by the earth spinning on its axis. Because we're acting it out and we're all involved, then we can learn it easier. Another group is creating a drama to explore hypothetical questions. Welcome to the 12 o'clock news. I'm Reese and this is Emily. Planet Earth slows down. Will it ever stop? Just a second ago, we were told by astronomers at NASA that planet is starting to rotate at a much slower rate. People have started to ask many questions. Will it ever stop? 
and what will it mean for us? We came up with um, if the world did start spinning slower, what would actually happen to it? And we thought about if the gravity slowed down a bit, and people might go floating up into space, and when they walk, they might bounce a bit on the ground. So what do you think of the news that paleotherapy is slowing down? I'm way angry. I already have to spend six hours at school, and now I might even have to spend more time working. The children's imaginations are providing the answers at the moment. When they meet a real astronomer, they'll be able to learn more. When you see them enjoying an activity, you know whether to where to base your next lesson on, really. Um, some things don't work so much with the children. And then you learn from that and don't, don't try those activities again. It was fun because we were doing like, an activity, like funny and having fun, but we were like learning about space and how the Earth might move slower um, at the same time. When they had to write their news report, they had to think about what would happen if the Earth started to spin more slowly. They needed a, quite a bit of prompting with that to think, what, how would it actually change their life? Then what you should think about, how are you going to explain this to the rest of the class? You've got your diagrams to help you. Using your diagrams, I want you to think. How are you going to tell the rest of the class about this and explain to them how we get midday, midnight? Think about which side of the Earth should be facing the sun. Should it be the light side or the dark side? As well as using imaginative drama, the children are making a labelled diagram to show what they've learned. Move the paper, would that help? Mm. <laughs> The light from the sun is still just reaching this part of the earth. It is sunset. What we're going to do now is to check back at what we were supposed to learn this lesson and see if we have. OK, so we're going back to our original learning objectives and our key questions. OK, to start with our key questions, <laughs> why do we have night and day? Who can answer that? Um, because the Earth spins on its axis, and when it moves around, um, the sun shines on different places, and so, like, the Earth doesn't all get the sun at once. Excellent. So it's all to do with the Earth spin, and if it's facing the sun or is away from the sun, that's how we get night and day. OK, so who's looking forward to the trip to the planetarium? Yay! Some of the questions we've thought of today about the eclipses are something we could ask the astronomers when we visit next week. OK? At the end of the school day, Adrienne meets up with head teacher Tracy Gayteri. So how do you think it went today? I think it went quite well. The children all understood the learning objectives mm. and by the end they could tell me why we have night and day and how long it takes the Earth to spin on the axis. We started looking a bit about eclipses as well, but we'll hopefully we'll look in more detail at the planetarium next week. So do you think this was quite useful to start off with using these? Yeah, definitely. Stones. It gave me an idea of what the children um, you're ready, although they mostly did it in pairs. Some of them I saw looking over each other and wondering mm. what the right answer was. But I'm really surprised that you didn't get a lot more unsures. Mm -hmm. The children confidently went for false <laughs> or true, didn't they? Yeah. Whether they actually were right or wrong. I think space is quite a hard topic for the children mm. to grasp because even scientists find it confusing. Well, even and adults. Adults <laughs> as well. Exactly. So it's hard to portray it across to the children. Because there's so many questions unanswered and children like to have their questions answered, don't yeah. they? So they expect us to be the sort of the wonderful knowledge and um, there's so many things that we still don't know. A lot of the science topics that we do at school is obviously very hands-on, very practical. We go out to the woodlands, we grow plants, but it's very different, this topic. So we found the children are still motivated, still willing and interested to learn? Yeah, definitely. Children are still very motivated, even though, like you say, it's not so much a practical topic. I think it's because there's a lot unknown about space yeah. and the planets. It's a bit of a mystery to them. Mm. So even though they find it hard, it's still very exciting. Yeah. To learn well, also, it leaves the boundaries open again for them to research things of their own interest, follow their own interests, mm. isn't it? Which we, try to, which we try, do try to promote. So, are you and the children looking forward to going to the planetarium then? Yes, definitely. I think they're looking forward to seeing what's in the sky and looking yeah. at the planets. Reflecting on the lesson yeah. points up for Adrian just how challenging mm -hmm. teaching about Earth in space is and how valuable it is to have a more direct experience. On a nighttime visit to this observatory, the children meet astronomer Bob Forrest. 
My name's Bob and I work at the observatory here and we're going to look through the telescopes and see what we can see tonight. It's giant on my head. I'm watching the rock. It's just really cool. <laughs> How far can the telescope go? Well, we can see for a very long way indeed. We can see all the planets in the solar system. We can see lots of stars beyond the planets. And we can even see other galaxies, as we call them, way, way away. So it can see a tremendous distance. Are you looking for a star or a planet? Well, I'll let you decide that. You can go up and have a look and see what you think. What can you see, Alex? Um, I can see, like, little dot. Yeah, I can see two. And you're all correct then, because it is in fact it's a pair of stars, and if you look carefully, you'll be able to see that there are different brightnesses. One's brighter than the other, and also they are slightly different colours. One is blue, and the other one is sort of yellow. That is actually because the stars are at different temperatures, and some stars are like the sun. The yellow star is like the sun. The blue one is actually hotter than the sun. This is the perfect opportunity for the children to put their classroom learning into context and tap into the knowledge of an expert like Bob. If the Earth slowed down, would there be um, longer nights and days? Yes, that's it, absolutely what will happen, yeah. As, as the Earth slows down, then each day will get slightly longer. And in fact, the Earth is slowing down. It's a very tiny amount, so you, you'd never notice it, but it is slowing down a little bit every day. So every day and every night is very slightly longer than the one before. Does space ever end? Uh, no, it just goes on and on and on and on. It's huge, absolutely huge, much bigger than, you, than any of us can imagine. It's not just the children who are fired up by the visit. Their parents have caught the space bug too. And I think it's a very good idea to bring them out to something like this, and I think all children should have the opportunity to, to do so. It was better than I thought, because I didn't know about the blue stars and yellow stars. When he said that, I was quite surprised. To see, you know, the different planets, the stars, it's a great opportunity for them. It, it opens their horizons to what they're learning, and to come here to a place like this, it's a great opportunity. I think it would be quite cool to do what, like, Bob's job is, because, like, if there was a meteor coming down to hit Earth, you'll be the first one to know about it. For 15 years, we could all have found a galaxy and we could be living on another planet or something. Something like this could have a, an impact on their future career, you know, if not um, a one-off chance to see what it's like to be in something like this. Uh, I wish I had the chance when I was young. Would have changed my whole career, possibly. In the second programme in this unit on the Earth in Space, we'll see the class visit the Science Learning Centre east of England at the University of Hertfordshire, where the children get hands-on with telescopes, solar scopes and a planetarium. Whoa! 